Hello, my name is Grace Guetta Gonzalez with the Cooperative Extension Program, Bear County, Prairie View A&M University. I am going to do a presentation today on identity theft. This will focus on how to clear your name, what to do when this happens to you, and also some tips on how to keep yourself safe. It is titled, When Bad Things Happen to Your Good Name. It was developed by Dr. Joyce Kavanaugh, Associate Professor and Family Economics Specialist, Texas A&M AgriLife Extension. ID theft is when someone uses your personal information such as social security number, name, address, etc. to open accounts in your name, to take over existing accounts, or to take your identity completely. More than 10 million people were victimized last year. Identity theft costs businesses about $47 million and consumers more than $57 billion. ID theft is a very serious crime. People whose identity have been stolen can spend months or years and thousands of dollars cleaning up the mess the thieves made to their financial status and credit record. Victims have lost job opportunities been refused loans, and even been arrested for crimes they did not commit. How does it happen, you may ask? Identity thieves use a variety of methods, both low-tech and high-tech, on your personal information. They may get information on you from the businesses where you work at or do business with. They may steal files out of offices where you're a customer, employee, patient, or student. They can hack into your personal files or bribe employees. They can rummage through your trash, known as dumpster diving. Obtain your credit report by posing as loan officers, landlords, employers, or someone else who has a legitimate need for and legal right to the information. They can copy or steal from credit or debit cards when you use them at stores or at restaurants. As we mentioned before, they can also steal wallets and purses containing your identification and credit and bank cards. They can also steal your mail, including your bank and credit card statements, pre-approved credit card offers, new checks, investment statements, and tax information. They can also complete a change of address form to direct your mail or divert your mail to another location. They find personal information in your, in your home as well. They also engage in phishing by posing as a business or government official to scam info from you. This practice occurs using email with a fraudulent link to, to make it appear legal or look like an official website, but in reality, it's a fake. When you enter your personal information, the thieves have what they need. It can also occur over the phone or in person when someone calls you asking to give personal information to verify an account. You may ask, how do they use my information? Well, they can go on spending sprees. They can purchase items over the internet or telephone using just your account information. They may call the credit card issuer and change the address on your account. Since you're not receiving any bills, it may take you a while to realize that there is a problem. They open new accounts when you're under your name, using your date of birth, your social security number, and when they use the credit card and don't pay the bills, the delinquent accounts are reported on your credit report. They open new bank accounts in your name and write bad checks. They buy cars, houses, and take out education loans in your name. Of course, when they don't pay the delinquencies, they're reported to your credit report. They counterfeit checks and debit cards and drain your account or your bank accounts. They filed bankruptcy under your name to avoid paying debts they incurred. They also may give your name during an arrest. When you don't show up to court for an arrest, uh, for, for an arrest or for whatever they arrested you for, oh, an arrest warrant is issued under your name. How can you tell if you are a victim? Most people have no idea that they are a victim of identity theft until they notice charges or withdrawals they did not authorize on account statements, stop receiving their bills or other mail, 
begin receiving credit cards they did not apply for, they're denied credit, or they begin receiving calls from debt collectors about accounts on merchandise that they bought or on credit cards that they've never opened. It is important to check your credit report at least once a year. If someone has been using your information to open up new accounts, these accounts will likely be reported on your credit report. The request for your credit report will also show up and may be the first sign of trouble. It is important to review your credit report from all three credit bureaus. Since not all creditors report to all three credit bureaus, you can obtain a free credit report annually. A new federal law, the Fair Credit and Accurate Credit Transaction Act, will require credit bureaus to provide you with one free copy of your credit report every 12 months. This provision of the law is being faced in across the country. Texas residents are now eligible for their free copy that was put in place back in June 2005. There are several ways to receive your free report. You can request online at www.annualcreditreport.com, call the toll-free number or request in writing. The web address, telephone number, and mailing address are the only ways to receive your free reports under this law. Other sites offer free credit reports, but they often are selling some other product or service and using free credit report as a way to get you to sign up. Do not confuse these sites with the official site for receiving your free credit report under the Fair and Accurate Credit Transaction Act. It is not necessary for you to request a report from each of the three credit bureaus at the same time. If you want to use your free credit, free credit report as a way to monitor for potential identity theft, consider requesting your report from a different credit bureau every four months. For example, you would request a copy from Credit Bureau A in June, Credit Bureau B in October, and Credit Bureau C in February. This way, you, you will receive one free copy from each credit bureau every 12 months but will be able to monitor your report more frequently than once a year. Any suspicious activity on one report can be reported and any potential identity theft can be caught earlier if you requested all reports at the same time. If you determine that you are a victim of identity theft, here's what you need to do. Place a fraud alert on your credit report Call the toll-free number of the fraud department for any one of the credit bureaus. As soon as the credit bureau confirms that you are a victim, they will automatically notify the other two credit bureaus and have a fraud alert placed on your report. The fraud alert tells creditors who receive your credit report that fraud has been associated with your report. Creditors should attempt to notify you and confirm that you actually applied for the credit that generated the credit report. Credit Creditors should attempt to notify you and confirm that you actually applied for the credit that generated the credit report request. This should reduce or eliminate any new fraudulent credit accounts from being opened. Be sure to verify with the credit bureaus how long the initial fraud alert will remain on your account and what you need to do to extend it. You should include a victim statement in your credit report explaining what happened and how to contact on how to contact you to verify credit applications. Call the FTC ID theft hotline. They can help you file a complaint with the FTC. This can help law enforcement track down ID thieves and stop them. The hotline can also help you figure out what to do next. Complete an ID theft affidavit available from the FTC website. Since you didn't open the disputed accounts, you don't have any of the paperwork showing you didn't do these things. The FTC, in conjunction with banks, credit grantors, and consumer advocates developed the ID theft affidavit to help you close unauthorized accounts and get rid of debts wrongfully attributed to your name. You should also file a police report with your local police or community where the ID theft took place. Creditors may ask for a copy of the report 
or the case number when you dispute unauthorized accounts. Provide copies, not originals, of any documentation you have such as debt collection letters, credit reports, ID theft affidavit, and many or any other evidence. Close any accounts that have been tampered with or open fraudulently. This includes accounts with banks, credit card companies, and other lenders. Also with phone companies, utility companies, internet service providers, and others. Ask the companies if they accept the ID theft affidavit. It is very important to keep accurate and complete records. Like at the end of my last slide, I mentioned that it is very important to keep accurate and complete records of what you do to resolve your case. You need to keep a log or journal of everything you do, dates and names of people you talk to, and the summary of the conversations. You need to follow up on all phone conversations and writing and keep copies of the correspondence. Send letters certified by mail with a return receipt requested. Keep all original documents. Never send originals, only send copies. You may find it helpful to set up a filing system to organize your paperwork and keep all your files even after you think you have resolved everything in case something reappears down the road. One of the best ways to minimize your risk of ID theft is to guard your social security number. Don't routinely carry your social security card with you. Leave it in a safe, secure place at home and only bring it when you need it. Employers and financial institutions will need your social security number for tax reporting purposes. Other businesses may ask for it in order to complete a credit check when you apply for a loan, rent an apartment, or sign up for utilities. Sometimes businesses want it for general record keeping purposes. You don't have to give a business your social security number just because they ask for it. Medicare recipients often ask, what to do about their Medicare card since it contains your social security number. This is a challenge. Consider carrying a photocopy of your card with all but the last four numbers blacked out. Only carry your original card when you have an appointment with a healthcare provider and you know you will need to show your card. You may wanna ask these questions when they ask for your social security number. Why do you need it? How will it be used? How do you protect it from being stolen? What will happen if I don't give it to you? After you ask those questions, the decision is yours, whether to hand them the, your card or not. Never give out personal information over the phone, in person, or over the internet unless you have initiated the contact. You know who you're dealing with and there is a legitimate need for the information. Financial institutions and businesses will not contact you and ask you to verify an account or an account number or information they already have on file. When you receive a call asking for this type of information, please hang up and call the institution or business back using the phone number from your account statement to see if they actually made the call. If not, you will be able to alert, you will be able to alert them to a fraudulent activity. Never write passwords and PIN numbers on credit or debit cards and never provide them to others. Avoid using easily available information like your mother's maiden name or the last four numbers of your social security number or phone number. Guard your mail and trash. Consider getting a mailbox with a lock or having a post office box to prevent people from stealing mail from your mailbox. Always deposit outgoing mail in a post office, collection box rather than in your mailbox or other unsecured mailbox. This prevents outgoing mail from being stolen to obtain account numbers. If you are planning to be away from home, a good idea is to have your mail held at the post office until you return. Secure your personal information in your home. Use a lockbox or locking file cabinet. Cabinet. This is especially important if you have people working for you in your home or having service work done. If you are employed, ask how your employer safeguards your personal information. Who has access to it? Is it kept in a locked location? How is information disposed of? Also, use a cross-cut paper shredder or tear documents before disposing of them in the trash. This includes receipts with an account numbers on them, old account statements, 
insurance forms, credit applications, canceled checks, expired credit cards, and pre-approved credit card offers you receive in the mail. Only carry the identification that you need, credit cards, and other account information with you. This will make it a lot easier to know what you lost if your wallet or purse is stolen. You can also minimize your risk by opting out. There are several ways to reduce the amount of information, requests, and offers you receive in the mail or by telephone. The identity theft brochure from the Texas Attorney General contains the numbers and addresses to remove your name from pre-screen credit offers to be placed on the Texas and or no national do not call list to reduce telemarketing calls and the address of the Direct Marketing Association to reduce the amount of mail offers you receive. This also helps by reducing the amount of your personal information kept on corporate marketing databases. On this screen, there is a list of numbers and websites that you can utilize for reference. If you are a computer or internet user, there are ways that you can minimize your risk. When using a computer, use virus protection and firewall software. Don't download files or click on links from people you don't know and trust. Use secure browsers. Don't store personal information on your laptop or desktop. Delete any personal information before disposing of a computer. For more information regarding identity theft, you may contact the Texas Attorney General at www.oag.state.tex.us or the Consumer Protection Hotline 1-800-621-0508, the Federal Trade Commission at www.ftc.gov backslash ID theft, or Identity Theft Resource Center www.idtheftcenter.org. These are very important numbers to keep. If you need a brochure about the Texas Attorney General, or you need more information, you can always go online and request the information to be mailed to your home. Thank you for listening to this presentation on identity theft. Hope you have a great day. Thank you.